Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming Last Chance Qualifier. We are playing for four slots to Sunday's $20,000 main event. I'm Tandy, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. Uh, we have three rounds in the books, so this is round number four of five. After five rounds of Swiss, we're doing a stoppage, and the best four records will be given qualifications. Uh, Ross, why don't you give us a rundown of who uh, we're going to be watching this round and what decks are playing? Well, we've been watching Chase Irwin, and he keeps winning, so uh, he's going to be on again. We've got two players at 3-0, and so I wanted to show you them. The winner almost assuredly into the top four. Mm -hmm. uh, so Chase Irwin, one of our 3-0s, that is, is it Merktide? He's going to be playing against Oliver Mason. And one of our two players on Mono Green Tron in the field today. So no Rakdos at the undefeated tables in this LCQ. Instead, we got some, some more classic modern decks. Well, there's plenty of Rakdos scam on our back two feature matches, and we're going to get to those hopefully before the end of the round. Uh, the players are not quite ready in the feature match area. They're still shuffling and stuff. Uh, let's talk about the matchup for just a moment. So Merktide versus Tron. This is the classic case of do I have pressure and then do I have disruption to stop your massive ramp strategy? Yeah, and I've got to say I like the way Chase Irwin's list is built for this kind of matchup. You know, we've got a lot of free counter spells with subtleties and force negations between the main and sideboard. Force negation is one that I am very happy to see come back in high numbers. And, you know, with all of those decks like uh, Beanstalk, the One Ring running around, Force Negation has a ton of great targets, but it's also just a great way to use extra resources garnered from those. In Murktide specifically, the only real card advantage you have is going to be like Expressive Iteration. And so it's usually a little bit weaker here, but it's such a strong card in this actual metagame that that's why you're seeing it crop up, I yeah. think. And this is a matchup where you can easily get to four mana and hard cast it, and then it's an excellent card in the matchup, you know, doing its best Mystic Snake impression. Uh, but as a 3-3 three, three flyer, you know, the other thing I always look for in a matchup like this, where are the Blood Moons, if any, in sure. the Murktide list? There's one in the sideboard, so not a ton, but I like having the free counter spells. Uh, I'm also wondering how effective Narset could potentially be. Right. You know, forcing them to time the Chromatic Spheres and Chromatic Stars a little awkwardly. It also shuts off the One Ring, which is a huge yeah. upgrade for the Tron decks. Uh, I know Christian Calcano taking second place at the Modern Pro Tour with Tron. Uh, the One Ring was a huge factor in that. And Karn the Great Crater being able to let you play seven effectively in your main deck is pretty wild. Yeah. So a lot of good dynamics here for uh, Chase Irwin uh, in his particular build of Merktide against Mono Green Tron. As far as the Tron list goes, uh, I'm looking at it. It looks pretty typical. The one thing I will say, two copies of Urza Saga in the main deck. Our mm. previous Tron player didn't really have utility lands. Urza Saga, an excellent card against an opponent packing a ton of counter spells. You can just play out a land, start making a few constructs, force your opponent to maybe leave in removal that they don't want to leave in in order to deal with them. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have to tap out to, you know, uh, re catch up on the battlefield, and then that opens up a window for you to land one of your bigger threats. Uh, it's also nice because you can use it early to sacrifice to go get Expedition Map if you're like really hard up on uh, Tron pieces. And then later in the game, Expedition Map and Sylvan Scrying finding Urza Saga just lets you grind through things like Rakdos Scam that are just ripping your hand apart. Yeah, it keeps a higher percentage of your deck live into yeah. the mid and late game. All right, well, our players are ready in the feature match area, so let's head on down there and see who wins between Chase Irwin's Murktide and Oliver Mason's Tron. On your right is a Murktide from Chase Irwin. On your left, Mason Oliver on that monogreen Tron. Both players are currently undefeated. Enough with Pluto Delta. Looking to play Raghavan or DRC here on the first turn, more than likely. Let's see what he got. Could be a preordain. That would be worse. It would be worse, but Preordain is still very good. You know, Preordain is one of those cards that I have loved for a long time, and it was, it was banned in Modern for forever, and I had a hard time like convincing people that it was okay to unban. Now that it's unbanned, Ross, I want your honest take. What do you think of Preordain in Modern? It's a good card to exist in the format for sure. The, the difference is that you had to get people out of the mindset of where Modern used to be five or six years ago, where there was a ton of combo decks and, you know, fast uh, non-interactive strategies. Periodone would have pushed the format further down that rabbit hole, right. and that would have been bad. But in the last three or four years, so much cheap interaction has been put into the format that you don't really see those fast linear decks anymore. So now Periodone is being used in a fair way, and that's perfectly fine. 
All right, Erwin here leads off with the Dragon's Rage Channeler, plays a Preordain, looks at the top two. I see another Preordain and a Lightning Bolt. Probably not. doesn't want either. Put some both on the bottom. We're going to draw. Looking for another threat. Needs Raghavan or something similar. Maybe another DRC. Where are we in terms of Delirium? I see two land, Bobble, Preordain, but I could be wrong on the second yeah. land. I, I wouldn't have minded slamming the Bolt to get instant. That would have given us Delirium. Mm, good call. Maybe just wants uh, more looks at something a bit better. And then is okay just dealing one only this turn. But I kind of like your your line. Even yeah. has Bolt in hand to fire off instead of keeping it on the Preordain, which yeah, is what I thought. You, you have two counter spells and an Unholy Heat. Just You can fire this Bolt off now and still have counter spell up. Okay, well, it's going to heat go. your advice. Bolt your face, 16. And then we're going to attack for three down to 13. Clock is on, but Oliver here has two Tron lands in play with a map. And we're going to get seven mana on turn three. The marquee start for Mono Green Tron. Now, Chase effectively missed out on two damage last turn. Could have attacked for yeah, three with the DRC do? instead of one. <sighs> that three damage right now looking pretty relevant because Oliver, or Mason Oliver's uh, life total is one more than a multiple of three. So it's going to take five turns to deal 13 damage. It would only take four turns to deal 11 with this DRC. We'll see if that extra turn ends up making a difference. There's a lot of writing on the Urza land that was just found. I don't know what it says. I'm going to turn my head sideways. It says, ooh, ooh, or out, out, something like that. Anyway, here is the one ring. Counterspell takes it down. We're going to get a scry as well. Can we keep it up? <gasps> here is Relic of Progenitus to eat the graveyard, and now Dragon's Rage Channeler is much less effective. Can we get uh, the, the names swapped? You got Mason Oliver. His, name, his name's Oliver Mason, director. Wow, you got egg on your face, director. We got a lot of people with two first names here at the Apex series. Yeah. Well, we'll get that. Could just put a comma. Mason, comma, Oliver. <laughs> yeah. That'll be fine. All right, here's an attack for three. No more delirium, thanks to that Relic of Progenitus. We do get a treasure. Oh, looks like you also found a Murktide region that is now uncastable. Okay, so. That Relic of Progenitus is coming in clutch. We're going to tap big. Here is Worm Coil Engine. This thing is really tough for Murktide to beat if it resolves. It does not resolve. Here's Counterspell. Yeah. It's going to take it down. That is the last Counterspell for Chase Irwin. So. Does follow it up with Oblivion Stone off of the Urza's Tower. So even though he's getting disrupted, he still has some interaction here for the next turn. Here comes Dash Ragavan, another attack for three. Mason down to seven. Gets Besaju off the Rago and Trigger, so no help there. And do a spell snare for turn. The worst counter spell against Tron. I mean, counter Sylvan's crying sometimes. Yeah. It's not completely dead, but it is the worst one. All right, draws an Odawara. Def now, probably not going to dash the Raghavan this turn, right? Not yeah. Not going to run headfirst into the O-Stone? Probably not, but we can the attack with the DRC, and one point of damage here is relevant. That gets Mason to six mm -hmm. life. Two more bolts would be lethal. The real problem for Chase is that he just doesn't have a counter spell here. Well, we're going to blow the Oblivion Stone here in step. That will kill that treasure token as well on Chase Irwin's side of things. Thinking about using the mana. If he can Odawar his own Dragon Rage Channeler, maybe that's what he's thinking about. I can't imagine that that's the right play, though. Yeah. Because the DRC doesn't do a whole lot at this point. You do right. get land in the graveyard with channeling the Odawara. It's true. That puts us one type away from Delirium because there's Counterspell and Raghavan already there. All right, just going to let it go. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. It does immediately remove the treasure, so points for Chase to be on top of that interaction. All right, here is another Oblivion Stone. This is going to protect us from another future threat, but we also now have Urza Saga online. Every artifact is going to grow the constructs generated by that powerful land. Urza Saga, such a powerful card printed in Modern Horizons 2, has uh, changed the face of the whole format. Yes, that is a very good one. This expressive iteration, however, not so good. There's the <laughs> second spell snare. Oh yeah, and a second Raghavan. I that probably red. <laughs> I imagine the snare goes to the bottom. Yeah, 
keeps okay. scalding part. Yeah. We'll keep the land. Now we can dash a Rogavan. Well, dashing into the construct, it will trade, so maybe yeah. that is worthwhile. Gotta be. Chase gonna go fetching. Down to 14 from a Steam Vents. You can try to force a trade here, then use the like the Merc Tide to force the Oblivion Stone Pop the next turn, and then still have a Rogavan left over to try to get over the finish line. But this Urza Saga can, as you mentioned earlier, find Expedition Map to find another Urza Saga. So we can sort of keep the chain going of constructs and make sure Oliver Mason has some gas left in the tank. All right, just going to hard cast the Rogavan. And in a turn, we're going to blow the Oblivion Stone just to kill Rogavan. We're going to make a construct and go back Oliver's way. That's interesting because now the Murktide is very threatening. I'm not sure what is left in Oliver's hand. He's moving really quickly. He's he, he's acting like he's got this game sewn up. I think so, too. Oh, ho, ho, maybe that's yeah. why. Real Cup of Genitus. And not only is that going to grow the constructs, but it's also going to eat the graveyard again and keep Murktide Regent from being a factor here in this game. Let's see if he does it after combat damage. Yeah, let's play out my artifact, get in max damage. Schmoosh. Love the sequencing. Now the question is, do you pop it now? If the answer is yes, we're going to draw a card, exile graveyards, floating a mana. That's dismember in hand. Interesting. Going to go ahead and cycle the Chromatic Sphere as well. Does Shrinky Dink the Construct, so maybe if he had something cool to do, maybe he should have left, but I feel like just chaining these off is fine. Yeah, it looks like he's out of gas. Okay, there's another another draw. Is that another Oblivion Stone? Oh yeah, number three. Okay. Get him in there. So another artifact next turn, and this is a lethal attack. Yeah, we can also uh, put protection counters from the Oblivion Stone on our stuff eventually. S What's the name of the counters, Ross? You remember? Fate counter. Wow. If you didn't think Ross had a photographic memory before just now, you should know now because I've never seen him hold an Oblivion Stone. Yeah, not. I think I've registered a couple of them, but not the very often. All right, Chase Irwin in. A lot of trouble here. Let's see if he can find a way out. Looking <sighs> down the barrel of two four four constructs at ten life. Oblivion Stone checking big threats, and Relic of Genesis checking the Murktide. Yeah, it's really the relics that have done a lot of the heavy lifting for Bingo. Oliver Mason in this game. If you look at Chase Irwin's hand, he's got a lot of spells, but without a graveyard, they're not spells that are particularly powerful. Here's Darcy. Doesn't even have the mana available to channel the Odawara. If he had played a Raghavan instead, he could have channeled Odawara to bounce a Construct. Wonder if maybe he played the wrong creature. The shrinky dinks before attacks. I don't yeah. love this play. Trying to make black mana for the dismember, but we could have done this later. Oh, instead we just found <laughs> Ulamog. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes! The game one handshake! I love the game one handshake. It's so good. Chase was so demoralized by that Ulamog that he extended the hand. Well, yeah, he should have been. Yeah, it was a demoralizing little bug. <laughs> you also know it came off of the chromatic uh, star. Yeah, so, yeah. all right. Well, uh, as these players are reaching to their sideboards to look for some help, I'm going to look for some help with my main man Ross. His expert analysis of what these players are going to be bringing in. On the right, we see Chase uh, Irwin's Merktide Regent. What's he going to be bringing in from that sideboard? So, Chase's sideboard has two copies of Engineered Explosives, one Fluster Storm, one Spell Pierce, two Stern Scolding, one Cursed Totem, one Unlicensed Hearse, one Blood Moon, one Days in Doing, one Force of Negation, one Narset Parter of Veils, one Subtlety, and two Fury. I like the Spell Pierce. I like the Blood Moon. I like the Force of Negation. I like the Subtlety. Pretty sure I like the third Narset. You can't have too many of them because they're hard to tap out for, but uh, I think it's probably better than Expressive Iteration if it came down to it. Right because of the disruption it affords against the one ring. Um, I don't think I like Flusterstorm enough. Ancient Stirrings and Sylvan Scrying is not enough targets. Um, and yeah, I, nothing else really uh, stands out to me. I guess Fury could potentially answer Karm, but you have an Holy Heat for that. 
All right, on the other side of things, uh, Oliver Mason's Mono Green Tron deck is mostly a Karn package, but uh, is there anything that stands out from his sideboard you think he's going to be bringing in here? Well, we got two copies of Haywire Might, one Ensnaring Bridge, one Walking Blusta, one Phyrexian Metamorph, one Torment Script, one Chalice of the Void, one Engineered Explosives, one Sundering Titan, one Cityscape Leveler, one Liquid Metal Coating, one Pithing Needle, one Warm Coil Engine, one The Stone Brain, and one Cursed Totem. I would... If I wanted a grocery list, Ross, I would have <laughs> asked, where is the grocery store? I wouldn't mind bringing in one of the Haywire Mites. Okay. You could potentially preemptively search it up uh, with Ursa Saga for a Blood Moon. I think at that point you're probably not worried about Blood Moon, but it's a fine card to draw if you're worried about Blood Moon, and you should be. Um, everything else, it sort of comes down to what you want to bring out, and in this matchup, you know, the relics are good, and all your threats are good. You know, Karn Liberated is kind of meh, but it can still answer like a Murktide Regent. And it's only a one of. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah, I, I kind of like just bringing in one Haywire Might. One change. Okay. One changes. Yeah. Uh, while these players are shuffling up here in Mulliganing Fort, game number two, I'd like to take a moment and say thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Ultimate Guard is the industry leader for TCG supplies, from their katana sleeves to the archive deck box. Ask your local game store for Ultimate Guard products today, and if they don't have them, say, hey, why not? Uh, I'd like to thank Moxfield. They're a uh, new and awesome deck building website where you can uh, link uh, your decks to your friends. You can show them your deck building page. I've been using one for my personal stream over the last few days since I've started working with them. And uh, they're uh, run by some great folks. And uh, we're happy to have them be a sponsor here on the Apex Gaming Invitational Series. Thank you so much to Wings Etc. Grill and Pub for keeping us fed and happy after these really long tournament days. We're going to be heading there in about an hour and a half, hopefully. Maybe sooner. Who knows? Uh, and, sooner. Yeah. Sooner. And lastly, I want to give a big, big thank you to TCGplayer.com for being our marquee sponsor here on the Apex Gaming Invitational Series. Uh, their contribution is helping us to... Uh, fuel these events, and we are very appreciative. Check out tcgplayer.com for anything you need for singles, from Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and now Disney's Lorcana. They got you covered. Also check out their sister site, uh, TCG Player Infinite, if you are interested in getting better at these games. You can check out written articles by big names such as Frank Karsten. Even, I had a few articles actually written on TCG Player recently, but they were for Lorcana. But uh, appreciate them for, for being our uh, flagship sponsor here on the Apex Series. Uh, players here are just about ready. It looks like we may have a mulligan here from Oliver Mason. Yeah, this is a mulligan to six. Looks like Chase kept seven. Oh, Oliver Mason. Is it every time you mulligan, you get a, one more life now? See how it happens? Mm. Seems fine. Now, there's a, there's a bug in the program that we use sometimes, and it, it won't let you change it, and it's it stays at 21, and I don't know why. So we might have to reset it or something here in a minute. But uh, while we get that sorted, Oliver Mason is going to be mulliganing again. But this is commonplace for those Tron decks. Uh, you know, they tend to only really need a couple of cards uh, to go along with seven mana. Yeah. So mulliganing yeah. to three is actually okay sometimes. Tron players have big mulligan energy. Well, they didn't used to. And then <laughs> we had to learn that. We had to say, hey, it's okay. Go to three. <laughs> <laughs> you just want Tron. Yeah, nothing else matters. You only need three cards. I have seen Tron win on a mold of three multiple times. It's just correct. All right, this looks like a pretty good fiver yeah. for Oliver. Definitely has a bunch of Tron lands that all look different. We'll see if he has any payoffs. I saw a copy of the one ring, so maybe it's like Tron one ring and a rando. Seems pretty good. Well, looks like the ring went to the bottom. See you. Oh, which member? This member. That's the one he kept. Got to get that Raghavan out of here. Booyah. Ooh, unfortunately for him, there's two Raghavans in Chase Irwin's opening hand. Well, do you wait or no? No, you can't wait in the face of Spell Pierce. Right. So instead you get punished by the second copy. Ooh, there's a third copy. Yeah, dashing is like, I don't know, not that bad if you're Tron. Yeah. It's we like got a lot of mana. We got a spell pierce in hand. Why don't yeah? Why don't we just hard cast and hold up the pierce? Then it's in play. Ross, when was the last time you saw someone hard cast a Raghavan after turn one? They do it all the time. I do it all the time too, but that's because we're great. 
Looks like we might have taken away the the natural Tron though <laughs> with the Ragavan trigger. <laughs> no. So what do, what do no! we know? Yeah, right. The game would be over already if we were playing, and Oliver Mason would be Troning us to death. <laughs> Secret genius, Chase Irwin. Tax for two more. Oliver already down to twelve thanks to those uh, big life loss from Dismember and the two hits from the Ragavan. Interesting that we didn't spell Pierce's relic of progenitus. Well, last turn. Maybe we were very afraid of Karn liberated or something. I don't know. Yeah, you just don't, you don't you don't get a lot of time to use spell Pierce against this Tron deck. That's true. So it does get bad in a hurry. Yes, yeah, so we've we like to take a second spell Pierce off that iteration along with the land drop. So. Two spell pierces back now for Chase Irwin. Are right, we going to eat graveyards and draw a card? Relic down. Finds a card in the Great Crater and another Tron piece. We're going to hard cast a Bolivian <laughs> Stone and Chase drops a spell pierce on the ground. He reaches for it so fast, and a Bolivian Stone goes to the to the yard. Chase now has the ability to dash Ragavan, hit again, maybe play a uh, Darcy along with it. Yeah, and then hold up the other spell pierce. All right, finds Ooh. a chromatic uh, sphere. Maybe he wants to play that. No, nah, wants to get his pressure going. Yep. Okay. That we'll was go a, back that was a trap time. chromatic sphere. Sometimes Ragavan traps you. Well, Mason with the big mulligan here can't find Tron. And Preordain is an excellent draw. That's going to get us pretty close to Delirium. Yeah, because we already have Ince in the graveyard, so we get one look from the Darcy, the Preordain itself. Okay, yeah, Ooh. so we did the thing that we've been accidentally doing. <laughs> we're going to try to fix it, but uh, we're going to have a, a judge call here. Chase Aaron accidentally put the cards from Preordain into his hand, but it was caught pretty quickly. Uh, they're going to explain to the head judge what happened. Uh, my guess is the head judge is going to say, Oliver takes two cards from your hand and puts them on top of the deck. Uh, of his choice. That, that's going to be my guess of what happens. As long as Oliver agrees that those are the two cards off the preordain, we should be fine to just continue. Well, one of th that's fair. But if I am in Oliver Mason's seat, I don't know that. They touch your hand, man. Give, <laughs> give him the rats. <laughs> Oliver does agree that those are the two cards off the scry from preordain. Chase takes the force negation off of it. Now, yeah, still no delirium, but we've got a couple counter spells up. All right, and including a force negation. So Oliver Mason here on the back foot, only seven life points left, could die this turn. There's another force negation. So I think that just about locks up the second game here for Chase Irwin. Yeah. Ooh, Umog milled off the top. Yeah, uh, halfway to casting it. Pretty close with a with the right Tron land. That's one of them. No, it's not. There's three of the same Tron land in play. Spell Pierce you. Ooh, gotta remember our surveil trigger. We could have killed him this turn. Well, uh, there's a bolt. There's a bolt. Doesn't matter. Dash you. Bing bang. Bing bang boom. Let me see one other card in your deck. Oh, no. Not set. I'll just show you the bolt. All right. Game number two goes to Chase Irwin. Explosive fashion. Uh, that game... Honestly, came down to Oliver Mason just mold to five, didn't have Tron, right? Well, it, it came down to the dash on turn two, well, really. <laughs> that's random. I don't want, you know, it did come down to that, but that's a random flip off the top. We would have both lost that game. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I would have dashed. <laughs> <laughs> you are a liar. Uh, well, is there... Okay, so on uh, Chase Irwin's side with Merc Tide, he is going to be on the draw for game number three. Uh, I assume you're looking at Deckless right now. What are you doing? Mm, I'm looking at uh, pairings to see okay. other matches that have reported. Well, I'll just fill in. All right. Uh, so right now, these are our two 3-0 players. Uh, they are currently playing to lock up their slot into the Invitational. A 4 and one record should be good enough. Ross did the math, and I trust his math. And uh, A lot of Paradigms lose. It's more likely that the 3-2 sneaks in. Uh, so that means 4-1 is turbo-locked. Yeah, 4-1 is going to be. All right, so four wins, and then the last round, probably irrelevant for that person. We'll see how things go from here. 
Uh, players here are shuffling up for game number three. This is round four. These players are three. And We're going to have five or six three ones after this round and the one four zero. Oh. I see. There are only four slots to give, though. This isn't an eight round thing. This is a, or an eight person thing. It's a four person thing. Oliver Mason going to do the Tron thing and Mulligan. Okay. I see. Is that the one Blood Moon in Chase Irwin's hand? I see a Ragavan as well. So if it is Ragavan in the yeah. Blood Moon, that could be disastrous for Oliver Mason. Is that Ragavan or DRC? It's a Ragavan. DRC has a different border in the top left. It's like black instead of white, I think. Mulligans? Did he just mulligan the turn two Blood Moon on the draw? Maybe his hand was just four lands. Blood Moon, Ragavan, something stinky? I guess. I don't know, man. There was a, there were lands. Yeah, you can't. Uh, I don't think there was any basic island. Maybe he thought the blood mood wouldn't be good if he can't really operate under it. You have a Ragavan. I don't think it was a DRC. Look, well, next time a DRC or Ragavan pops up in the hand, we'll see. The it's the border, right? The legends have that extra little wag toggle at the top, whatever it's called. I I couldn't tell you. I just look at cards and I get a I get a spidey sense. I'm yeah, like, I think right. it's this. Let's see. We'll see who's right. It's usually so, me, but sometimes it's Ross. I just, I just go off vibes. Okay. So there's Darcy and Aragavan. You're right. They're both Darcy. Yeah. Dang. All right. Good mulligan. <laughs> and now we're both mulliganing to five. Yeah, I think this probably favors Tron to an extent, but the Murktide deck, if it just has like a early spell pierce on one of your things that tutor for your lands, and you're on four or five or fewer cards... I can't imagine like you can actually cobble together a like a workable plan. Yeah. So if you're Chase Irwin, you're really looking for spell pierce, you're looking for force of negation to potentially tag a expedition map when you're on the draw. Right. Tag a map with force on the draw is so brutal. Okie dokie. Both players going to five. Low resource game usually favors the decks that are good at working at low resource, in this case, it's the Mono Green Tron deck, but some very specific interaction from Murktide could prove troublesome. Uh, see a looks like you handled a lot of threats in it. Yeah, we're going to go to four. See Man, I see Spell <laughs> I don't see Lantons but... in the other one. Is this a double? Oh, I see a Steam Yeah, vents. there's a okay, Steam okay. Vents. I think this is going to be a keep from Chase Irwin. Yep. Putting two back. Now. We're going to keep Ragavan, Spell Pierce, Land, and two others. It'll be interesting if Irwin decides to hold up Spell Pierce on turn one or play the Ragavan. Because you're not guaranteed the second land on turn two yeah. if you try to play it slow. So do you have do you take the risk? All right, here's another question for you, Ross. Uh what has taken more time in this match? Gameplay or mulligans? It's pretty close, but I think it's gameplay. I do too, but I think it's like two minute difference or something. <laughs> Just something really close. Hey, mulligans are important. <laughs> All right, turn one exhibition map, it resolves. I see another I, Tron land. <laughs> yeah, I think our four-card hand with two Tron lands map, Karn. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, and now once you see the map, you got to lead on the Ragavan. Yeah. Bye. That's another map drawn for Oliver Mason. I think Mason is close to punching his ticket. This is exactly the start he was mulliganing for, being on the play. Oh, ooh, Mog down. Is that a spell snare drawn for Chase Irwin? If that's still in the deck, I'm going to scream. I don't, yeah, I don't like that being in the deck, but we've got a preordain. Yeah, that's a good one. But passes the turn, has plenty of mana. I don't understand not playing the preordain here. Yeah, where he could get massively punished. You could have found a counter spell for that, off that, or force of negation. Right. Just win, Chris K. That's what it says. Just win. Now, if Oliver does go for Karn here and then find something, you know, that he can immediately cast, like a chalice or something like that. Uh, we can spell pierce that and then attack down the Karn to one and neutralize the threat that way. Mm -hmm. But then you just don't have much going on. But you still should play the preordain. There's like nothing that... N nothing is holding back playing that preordain. Nothing. He has three mana, three one mana cards. If he finds counter spell, he still has counter spell mana. Pays for the spell pierce. Karn's going to come down. One mana floating. We'll see if he wants to get something that costs one. Might just want to tick up kill that treasure token, but he's going to take a look at the sideboard here first before making a decision. Now, running out the spell pierce first is a little awkward because now, I guess, it, I mean, Oliver could get the Haywire Might, which is what he's looking at now with only one mana left. 
because that also protects potentially the Karn <laughs> I like that. from the Raghavan attack. Like Haywire Might. That also protects you from Blood Moon a little bit, too, if you can draw a green source naturally. Yeah. You have another map in hand, so you can map for a green source. Tight. All right. I'm in. Haywire, maybe. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a Haywire Might here. We're going to cast oh, a map, and, and then we're going to tick up on treasure. treasure. Okay. Love I, it. I, I'm, I'm happy with that, too. Tick up is a fine play for sure. The, yeah, the you're... treasure was locked down, but you just want to get the uh, the loyalty up. Now we run out the preordain. That counter spell would have been three cards down. Yeah, I'm screaming, crying, snot running out my, my out of my nose. I'm so mad. All right, finds counter spell, but this Karn. You know, we can check the thing that gets off of it first. Yeah, so you t you attack the Karn with the Ragavan down to four. Oh no, now we're going face. We don't have the, the clock to be this aggressive. We could have attacked Karn down to four, countered what you got off of it, then attacked it again. All right. Do we reveal top card? Yeah, it was a chromatic star. Okay. It also could have been played. Right. But it's locked down, so I understand. And he has counter spell up, so. Yeah, and the treasure doesn't, doesn't work. So, yeah. Right. Actually, yeah, th that was wise. All right. Back to Oliver Mason. Two cards in hand with Karn minus at the ready. And if you're Oliver Mason, you, you could sniff out Counterspell here and just use this map to find an Urza Saga. Keep taking up the Karn if you wanted to. Well, what do you think about Walking Ballista? Maybe make a 4-4, four, four, or 2-2 two, two for 4 mana Walking Ballista? Well, I think I would pop the map first, get Saga, and then we could play a 3-3 three, three Ballista. Well, if you're paying attention, I think he's got Saga in hand. There's two in the deck. Yeah, but if we have Saga in hand, that's still fine. Yeah, we might want to use this map for a green source against a Blood Moon, so this all makes sense. Move ground through the counter spell. And now Chase Irwin, you know, could have attacked this Karn fully down. You'd still have to deal with these two Urza Sagas potentially. But now you're probably gonna have to deal with another Karn activation. Well, let's see if Chase wants to continue his aggressive push towards hitting face. He does. Yeah, that's his plan of the matchup. Be aggressive. Yeah, it's been working so far. He's 3-0. Finds Ancient Stirrings. Can't cast that because the treasures are currently locked down. Yeah. Iteration was the draw for turn, so we'll fire that off. Finds a bobble we can't use and a pair of lands. Could probably keep both lands and use them better than that bobble. Yeah. Hopefully he realizes the bobble is turned off by the car, but I suspect he does if he knows the treasures have been. Yeah, but that's not how your brain thinks sometimes. There's like a disconnect on that type of thing. Yeah, it did put the bobble in hand. Looks like the canal went to the bottom. That is not a little nope. play. Yeah, we're going to get that stopped. All right, so Chase R1 popped the bobble. Karn's locking it down. We're going to get this paused. Chase likely going to get another GRV. This is going to be number two. And if uh, if... Or if it's number three that we saw off camera, maybe this could end up being a game loss. This is a another minor infraction, but over time they add up. So, yeah, we'll see. Are right, we gonna get uh, we're gonna get our head judge to to really uh, go yeah. over everything for us? Garrison's already there. He's on top of it. All right. Well, nothing to do. Nothing left to do except cry over spilt milk. And the good news for Chase Irwin is even if you, this penalty upgrades to a game loss, you lose this match, you're still 3-1. and one. You still have the next match yeah. to try to get in to the Invitational on Sunday. So your tournament is not over. It's got to regroup, tighten up, play some magic. Ooh. Will Hall winning his match against Living End. So we're going to see him next round battling for a spot in our Sunday Ooh. Invitational. So Will Hall... For those of you who don't know, he runs the Will Hall EXP channel on Twitch that broadcasts old Pro Tours and Grand Prix from Magic Past. And uh, he flew all the way here from England, jolly old England, to come play in our events. He, him and uh, Kyle Huck are friends, and uh, he decided to make the trip out and make it like a big, long trip to the United States. So he's going to be traveling around a bunch. <sighs> It might end up being a lucrative trip. 
Maybe if he's able to punch his ticket to the 20K Invitational on Sunday and win some cash. Hey! <laughs> not again! <laughs> <laughs> that is That would not be the same kind of penalty. It would not. That's a dexterity error. Yeah. It does a different Hidden path. card error. Oh, my God. Look, here's the thing, y'all. I know a lot about Magic's rules. A lot. And even I don't know everything about Magic's rules. So whatever you're in chat saying right now, I can see y'all right now screaming. Okay? Whatever you think, you're wrong. I'm just going <laughs> to say it. Ooh, and yep. This is the... the... Sundering Titan. Can we get Sundering Titan on screen? This is like from my nightmares. Sundering Titan was a big tinker target and extended right when I got super into uh, competitive magic. It costs 710. Huge body. When it enters or leaves play, you choose a land of every basic land type and destroy it. So it's forced, but you just blow up tons of lands from the opponent. No, the forest that entered the battlefield after the Titan. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, he sequenced well. He cast the Titan, then played the forest. Game rules violation. I saw. I... Oh. <laughs> Let's, don't try to sack those treasures. <laughs> you know, they should, never should have put static abilities on Planeswalkers, man. They never should have done it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. I, You know, Narset... Million GRVs, yeah. million uh, billion Nar GRVs. Narsa, Teferi card, they're all like everyone's least favorite Planeswalkers. <laughs> right, everyone's like, everyone who plays with them even is just like, yeah, this card's way too good. <laughs> and everyone who plays against them is mad for a completely different reason. <laughs> Alright, here's a Darcy. Our red sources got blown up, but we still have one now thanks to that Steam Vents. There are no mountains in the deck, and there's only three copies of Steam Vents. So if this red source goes away... It's going to be hard to find another one. Yeah. You need to naturally draw a canal... We're going to make a Saga token. And chapter three. What are we going to go get? Maybe another map. Could get Haywire Might. Could get, yeah, Rel Relic's good too. Yeah, protect you from uh, Merc Tide off the top. Yeah, shrink this DRC. Start attacking with the Sunder Titan. I think uh, Oliver Mason is a couple short turns away from punching his ticket to our $20,000 Modern Invitational on Sunday. You love to see it. A mono green Tron player willing to mulligan down to four. Yeah, and he did it quickly and decisively. He yeah. knows what his deck's about. Let's Very clear, it. he's played it a ton. Even has, it looks like, a bunch of his friends, maybe enemies, signing his Tron lands. Unsure. They could be vanquished enemies. Yeah. Never Perhaps know. he defeated them in the finals of the RCQ. Each of his top eight opponents, he said, please <laughs> sign one of my Tron lands. So I have a story for my kids. Here's a warm coal engine. We're going to quit. Chase Irwin says, I'm done. I tap out. And uh, Oliver Mason moves to 4-0, and, and he'll be our first member entering the Invitational this Sunday, punching his ticket 4-0. Now, I'll say this. You know, this is playing for top four in today's event, and we are giving away four slots, But four, and we're playing five rounds. So he does technically still have one round left to go, but we know 4-1 is a lock. Yeah, he's going to be in. 